Alrighty, welcome back. Welcome to episode two of this series where I'm teaching you how to make an IO game inside of Unity. All right, let's go. So in this video, we're obviously adding multiplayer. And to do this, we're going to need a special package from the Unity Asset Store. So let's head over to the Unity Asset Store and let's search for Photon on 2. This one's good. Click on Add to My Assets and sign in with your Unity account. Then when you've added it to your assets, go to Window, Package Manager, go to My Assets, and let's search for Photon. Uh, it's this one right here. So click Import, and let's import everything right here. Okay, fantastic. So with the asset imported, you should see this window. If you don't, go to Window, Photon, and then Pun Wizard, and click Setup Project. So it's asking for an app ID or email. Now to get this, we need to set up our project server. So in Google, type in dashboard dot photon engine dot com. And I'll put this in the description below as well. And let's just create an account. Click on your dashboard and click create a new app. In the type, let's select pun. We can name it whatever we want. I'll name it agar.io and click create. Now with this created, you should see your app ID. So let's just copy this. And now we can paste this in here and click set up project. Let's close this. And now we can just make the networking. So in our hierarchy, create an empty game object called room manager. And let's add a component called room manager. There we go. And in here, we'll add a few components. So first, we'll add a public string called room name and we'll set this equal to room one, just by default. Then we'll add a new void called start and we'll debug dot log connecting. And up here, let's make sure to be using photon dot pun. And in this start method, let's do photon network dot connect using settings. Now after this mono behavior, make sure to add pun callbacks and then we'll add a public override void called on connected to master. Make sure this is right here and we'll do debug dot log connected and then we'll do photon network dot join lobby so we'll add a public override void called on joined lobby and we'll do photon network dot join or create room room name and then for our room options we'll do no and this will also be null because we don't need it. Then we'll also add a public override void called on joined room. And in here we'll debug.log dot log where connected and in a room. Okay, so I'll just briefly explain what this does. So in the start method, we first connect to the server. Then once we've connected, we join a lobby. 
And from this lobby, we create or join a room. So in Photon, which is what we're using for the server, we can have multiple different games going on at once. And the way to do that is you change this room key right here. So say you can have five, 10, even a hundred different rooms or games going on all at the same time. Now, just to double check, let's play this. And after a second, it should say that we're connected and in the room. Awesome. Now this is pretty useless unless we're actually like syncing our player over the lobby. So let's do that. In our game manager, let's add a public void called spawn player. And in here we'll spawn it over the network. So let's add a new header here for food settings. And what it does is it just helps us organize stuff. So above this, let's add a new header called player spawning. We'll add a public game object called player and then a public game object for our camera. Up here, let's set using photon dot pun and in this spawn player method let's do photon network dot instantiate player dot name and let's just reuse this uh food spawning thing so i'll copy the spawn position and i'll do that for our position and then for the rotation we'll do quaternion dot identity there we go and then we'll set camera dot set active true and then we'll do camera dot get component and we'll get the smooth camera follow component so smooth camera follow and we'll set the target to be equal to this player fantastic so this should be all the code we need. Now there is a bit of setup that we need to do. So first off, we'll disable the camera by default and we'll make a new folder in our assets called resources. So create a folder and we have to name it resources. Make sure you spell this correctly, by the way. Uh, it's case sensitive, so if you don't, it'll cause you issues. Uh, now let's select our player and we'll add a few components to this. One is a photon view. And then we'll add a photon rigid body 2D view, uncheck synchronized velocity and check teleport for large distances. And then the final component we'll add is a photon transform view. Now also let's sync the scale. Okay. Now in this player, we also need to disable the movement and the size manager. And we only want to enable this on the local player. So we'll do player dot get component size manager dot enabled equals true. And then player dot get component movement dot enabled equals true. Okay. Now we can drag our player into the resources folder and in our game manager, let's actually set these values. So let's drag in our player for the player prefab and we'll drag in our camera for the camera. Now in, in this on joined room function, let's do game manager dot instance dot spawn player. Okay, so let's delete our player. There we go. 
And we can now play this. Okay, so we have an error in our movement script. And that is because this camera isn't assigned in the prefab. So the way to do this is to add a new void start. And I'll set cam equal to camera dot main. There we go. Fantastic. So now we have pretty much Agario. So now if we build and run this, excuse me. Okay, so if we actually just test this. We should. If we just go to the sensor right here, as you can see, it is multiplayer. I'm trying to balance both of these, but yeah, uh, there's there's two players. Um, they're synced over the network, and yeah, this is awesome. So now we have multiplayer. If this series, you know, does well, I know I said that this was only going to be a two-part series. But if this does well, I'll add a third part on how to make little name tags for our players and also on how to make them eat each other and take all their sides. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you found this useful. See you soon. Bye.